Uh, a great example of, of all of this um, is the Easy Falau issue in, in Australia, and, and it perfectly sh shows the point. Um, now, all around sort of, sort of the, the modern liberal democratic world, certainly in, in, um, in the UK, in America, in Australia, in Canada, in Scandinavia, uh, Christianity, so I'll say traditional biblical Christianity with its understanding of human sexuality and its understanding of human gender as basically being binary, male or female, with some exceptions to you know, people born with you know, medical disorders, you know. Um, Christianity is being treated in, 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 in all of those countries increasingly as something quite pernicious because our our views on sexuality and gender have so radically changed over the last 30 years. And so in Australia, as you know, John, and, and um, but some overseas may not know, we have, we have a footballer, Israel Folau, who posted on Twitter a tweet uh, basically saying that a whole bunch of uh, sinful activities would send someone to hell without repenting uh, and turning to Jesus for salvation. And one of the sins uh, was homosexuality or homosexual activity, probably better put. And um, now the, the, here, here's something that perfectly demonstrates my point about the status of Christianity now and how far we've come. That the criticism, now Israel Folau lost his job over that as a footballer. Now the criticism against Israel Folau was not that his words against homosexuality were offensive. That was not the great criticism. The criticism of Israel Folau was that his words on homosexuality were harmful, that they were actually causing people to uh, commit suicide. And this is where Christianity is sort of at right now in some respects in modern culture. Um, critics of Christianity in the Enlightenment period, their main critique of Christianity was that it's irrational. It doesn't make any sense. It believes in virgins giving birth and other things that just don't have the ring of empirical scientific truth. Okay, that's not really the critique of Christianity anymore for the most part. The critique of Christianity now, and it's the critique that Christians and churches are going to have to really think about and, and, and try to answer, is that Christianity is detrimental to people's mental health, that Christianity is actually harmful. And this is part of a, of a new ideology, a new way of thinking about the government that's strongly emerged over the last 40 years uh, that some people would call the therapeutic state. That it's not just enough for governments to secure our freedom and our property rights, it also ought to be securing our mental and emotional well-being. And it's actually quite dangerous because as soon as you can offer an argument that certain words, certain beliefs, certain practices might make other people feel bad about themselves, which might lead them to situations of self-harm or even suicide. At that point, you can use medical science, or at least, you know, medical science to justify silencing freedom of speech and silencing and, and stopping religious freedom. And that's where we are right now in this therapeutic state where essentially where we're heading is medical technocrats determining the things that people can say and cannot say and the practices that people can pursue based on their alleged mental health effects. Uh, and nothing shows that our attitudes towards Christianity have changed more than that Israel Folau case. But this is actually pretty dangerous in my opinion uh, because everything about it smacks of future limits on what we can say and on what we can do. And it'll all be in the name of healthcare. And that's something that's really hard to argue about, uh, argue against. Did you enjoy this episode? We cannot get good public policy out of a bad debate. If you value vital conversations like this one, please like, share, subscribe, and join the conversation.